Okay, we're going to replace four capacitors in the vertical sync circuit. So the first step is to disconnect the two shielded cables, the one with the white and orange wire and the one that you can't see very well behind it. Cables. Alright, so we'll take this one first. This handy tool is called a solder sucker or a solder pullet. My tweezers don't want to block your view. Okay, that capacitor is loose. And voila. Alrighty. This one is clearly marked. Alright, now I've got to work it up into there, and I can't see. There we go. And the leads are coming through, and we pull it up bend them and we're ready to solder. So all we do now is solder them in and clip it off. One down, three to go. And it ties to here. Of thus the white wire and in there the orange wire goes here. Round. Let's turn it on and see if it works. It appears that we now have vertical sync. I've uh, got a picture that now locks. It's a very soft vertical lock, so it still kicks and rolls occasionally like that. But it is apparently now producing enough of a vertical sync pulse to uh, keep the monitor happy for the most part. This is an expanded view of the vertical interval. If you'll note that in the video there's a, a pulse that goes low 
that is in time with the pulse on the upper trace and of course it is that pulse it's being added to the video at that point in the video coming off the tape the signal is muted off and this pulse replaces the original vertical sync in the video note that the picture is not rolling here's a nice close-up look at the audio board I'm about to change 13 capacitors on this board to repair the audio I'm just going to shotgun my schematic I have all my new spare capacitors to replace with I've highlighted all of the suspect capacitors that I want to change and in the manual I have highlighted the part locations on the diagram showing the back side of the board the side I will be soldering on I went across the board where every capacitor is located and I placed a blue dot to indicate where they are. There's a total of 13 blue dots on this board now and I will now methodically proceed to replace each capacitor. Here are the 20 capacitors I replaced in this video quarter. It was quite a lot of work. After changing approximately 20 capacitors in the CV2000 I've reached the point where it is now fully capable of playing back tapes for tape recovery. Before we bring them in, though, I'd like to give you a little of the background of what we're trying to do down here. This program is especially designed for very young children. Hi. 